Max, you and I, both in our very different lives, have been obsessed with the idea of the nature of reality, the nature of existence. You founded uh, FQXI, focusing on the fundamental questions of existence. But what I like to do sometimes is, is to take stock and, and to just make a taxonomy, a, a listing of, of the big categories that we're talking about. Everybody has their different approach to it. So I'd like to know, how, how, if you think of this totality of existence, what are the kinds of topics that you have as your major categories that ultimately you would like to explain? So I'm, uh, I have a very radical view, and we had a fascinating discussion this morning in a session called What Exists, mm -hmm. where we really had the whole spectrum there. What, what's on the spectrum? Well, in, in my opinion, it goes from the most unambitious, you might say, to people, for people who say that we should only talk with science about predicting experiments correctly. And, and it's not interesting to discuss whether additional things exist that we can't see or test, to um, the opposite end, which I subscribe to, that we should be more ambitious with science and actually ask the question about the true nature of reality, whether we can actually observe it or not. And I, so my guess is that uh, so you have a broader understanding of science, that science can ask questions, you're saying, if I heard you right, science can ask questions that we may not ever be able to get data on or use the scientific method to assess. But science, as a category of science, is still allowed to ask those questions. Well, first of all, I went into science not because um, I wanted a paycheck, but because I loved thinking about big questions, so I'm not going to stop thinking about what exists just because someone else says that's not their <laughs> definition of science. But second, I think we even can apply the scientific method sometimes to talk about things we can't test because what we're testing isn't ultimately stuff. We're testing mathematical theories. So if, if I have a mathematical theory of what exists and it makes a bunch of predictions for things that we can observe and, and it passes those tests, so we take it seriously, then I'm also entitled to take seriously the predictions it makes for that which we cannot exist. So I'm on the extreme end of the spectrum where I, I think that there is this fantastic hierarchy of par parallel universes that exists and um, that make various predictions. And um, I think at the heart of many of the most thorny debates people have now, whether it be about the interpretation of quantum mechanics or about the interpretation of inflation and pocket universes and so on, is this very question again about ultimately what is science supposed to be about? Is it just about correctly predicting our observations or are we truth seekers who, who want to understand everything that okay. exists? So, so you're a maximalist, not a deflationist, which, which I, I, I'd love to go with you on your ride. So what's in your categories? I mean, give me the, the the categories that are in your list of those things accessible to our questioning scientific way of thinking, even if they're not accessible to the data that we can collect. So my radical guess is that every universe, that everything that can be described mathematically exists, so that we're ultimately part of this incredible mathematical structure of which we can only be aware of a small part. And the challenge then becomes to take everything that exists and f identify all the observers in that and try to figure out okay, which observers might be us based on what we've observed so far and then predict what we're going to see next. So every, this, everything that exists in, in, in your uh, way of thinking uh, has to have a mathematical uh, foundation. This is what I think and it's very controversial but I, I feel this is the strongest and loudest lesson that science has taught us in the past hundred years or a thousand years that, that again and again when we've studied something really carefully we've found that it had a mathematical description. So to me uh, the best way to test this, this radical viewpoint and maybe falsify it is to take the thor sore thumbs that stick out and have still resisted a mathematical description and see, can we do them too mathematically? Right. And, and I know you've pursued consciousness along those lines. I think that's a exactly. terrific test case 
of can you describe something that seems indescribable by normal science through a mathematical s scheme. I, exactly. I think that's, I think that's, a, that's a very good project along those lines. Thank you. Um, you know, it may not be through our lifetime, but you know, I, I hope so. What about things like abstract objects? Uh, the forms of numbers and logic and uh, ideas, uh, they don't on the surface seem even possible to be reduced to mathematics. So do you have to be a so-called nominalist in saying that those really don't exist? It's all fiction or linguistic or outputs of the human mind? I view myself as a radical Platonist in the sense that... Uh, so it seems contradictory if you're a Platonist and wanting to reduce everything to mathematical form, uh, structures. Well, the mathematical objects such as the platonic solids, for example, the tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron, they are things which some people would argue are just things invented by mathematicians. But many of my mathematician friends don't feel that they invented them. They feel that they discovered them, that they have an existence. And, Plato, and you know, Plato himself, when he realized that there were five of them, he was free to invent whatever name he wanted for the dodecahedron, but he, he couldn't invent the sixth one because it doesn't exist. <laughs> and I, I ultimately think that that sense of existence and non-existence that mathematics gives us is exactly the same as what we're up against in physics. We don't say that we invented the planet Neptune, we discovered it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that ultimately it, it's all mathematical structures. And that's what the laws of physics are gradually approximating and, and beginning and uncovering. So your thesis is that if it cannot be reduced to mathematical form, that it doesn't exist, ultimately. The thesis and prediction and the way to falsify my conjecture here is to find some physical phenomena, yeah, that cannot be described well, mathematically. Well, you're saying physical, I'm, not, I'm saying any kind of phenomena, mm -hmm. anything that exists. Not restricting it to physical, because abstract objects yeah. are non-physical, so I don't know why. I'm in. <laughs> if it ain't mathematical, it doesn't exist.